What is going on everybody? OSRS HD mode is upon us. Now, I know that the HD plugin came out a few weeks ago from the time I'm uploading this video, but if you follow my channel, you guys know me. I am not one to jump on the hype train and put a video out the day after something happens. I'm just not built that way. I like to check things out, take some time to digest what it's all about, and then bring you guys an honest opinion or guide on how to do something. So in this video, what we're gonna be checking out is the OSRS HD plugin that is available through the third-party client RuneLight. Throughout this video, we're gonna check out everything that has to do with this plugin, as well as go over how to activate it and how to actually use it. There are a bunch of different settings in there and being an IT professional, I understand all the settings, I understand how they work and what they do for you, but if you're not on that same level as me, this video is going to explain to you what each thing does, why it does it, and how it can benefit your gameplay. Now the first thing we need to go over is how do you play in HD on old school RuneScape? Well, you need the third party client RuneLight, which I just mentioned a minute ago. Now you might be thinking it's a third party client. What if I get hacked? What if all my stuff gets stolen? RuneLight is a legitimate third party client. They are not out to steal your information. It is a legitimate website and developers that help keep this client safe and honest. I myself have been using RuneLight for years and have never ever had an issue with the client crashing or with something not working or with my information being stolen. But in the end, the decision is up to you. So if you are interested in downloading RuneLight and using the HD plugin, you can check out the description below. The legitimate RuneLight link is in the description of this video. Please do not download RuneLight from some other site. Any of those sites, they are hacks, they are scams, they are phishing attempts. RuneLight can only be downloaded legitimately from RuneLight.net. All right, so you don't have to be a computer wizard to download and install an application. So after you have gotten your RuneLite client installed, if you didn't have it, but if you already do, what you want to do is come over to the right side. You'll see a little wrench here, which is the configuration option. After that, once you're in the configuration option, you will see at the very bottom a button that says Plugin Hub. You'll want to click Plugin Hub. Now, I already have the HD client installed, but that doesn't matter. There's a little search bar, and above that search bar, it says external plugins are verified to not be malicious or rule breaking, but are not maintained by the RuneLight developers. They may cause bugs or instability. So, any of these in this plugin hub are legitimate and they can be used in RuneLight with no penalties to you. RuneLight is very good about talking with Jagex about what can and can't be in the client. So, if it is here, it is fine to have. Now, if you want to have the OSRS HD plugin, all you have to do is simply type in 117 and that will bring up the 117 HD beta client for RuneLight. After you have searched for the 117 HD plugin, all you have to do is click install and it will be automatically added to your RuneLight client. Now, once you're done with that, you want to click on the back arrow next to the search bar in the plugin hub. Once you have done that, you will be presented with all the available plugins in your RuneLight client. What I want you to do from here is type in GPU. Now we're not using the GPU plugin, but what I want to show you here is the GPU plugin and the 117 HD plugin cannot be used in tandem. When you have the GPU plugin on, it is utilizing your GPU to play old school RuneScape. The 117 HD beta client automatically uses the GPU and it has to use the GPU or the onboard graphics of your computer if you don't have a dedicated graphics card. So. If you're wondering why you can't turn both on at the same time, that is why. Because you can play old school RuneScape without the use of the GPU if you're not using the 117 HD beta client. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of what this HD client does and how it can make your gaming experience for old school RuneScape so much better. Now, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is click the little gear icon on the plugin. This will pull up all of the settings for the HD plugin. The first thing you will see at the top is the draw distance. Now looking at my screen right here, you'll notice that there is a fog around where I'm standing. So around Edgeville here, there's a fog. That draw distance is going to decrease or increase the fog. If you want it to be closer and you don't want to see as much, which I don't know why you would, you can decrease the draw distance. We'll take it down to 10 and you'll see that it is very, very close to me. Now, personally, I'm all the way zoomed out 
right now. And this is as far as you can zoom out without turning on the camera plugin in RuneLight. I personally like to keep my draw distance at 50. It gives me a very, very wide vision of the game. It's very nice to look at. And the draw distance in the fog is still there if I do scroll down and look around, but it is not too overwhelming. I can see everything that I need to see. The next thing we're gonna check out is anti-aliasing. Now with this, this is where you have to be careful. I never thought I would come to see the day where RuneScape would actually eat up GPU processing power, but it actually does. This plugin is very advanced for old school RuneScape. So MSAA actually stands for multi-sample anti-aliasing. And this is a type of spatial anti-aliasing, which is in used in computer graphics to remove something called jaggies. Jaggies are actually what make things look kind of pixelated around the edges. You'll see in this clip right now, if you look at the windows and the door frames, the table, you'll be able to see in there that they are a little jagged. Now, depending on your graphics card, you can run this at two times, four times, eight or 16 times. Obviously 16 is going to be the best, but it does eat up some GPU power. So I have an NVIDIA RTX 2070, which can handle this just fine. But if you have an older graphics card or you're using onboard graphics, 16 might be a little too much for you. So you might have to play around with that and see what's not gonna drop your FPS too much. Next up is the UI scaling, and this is the user interface scaling. This means your chat box as well as your inventory. Now in the UI scaling, you have a few different settings, nearest neighbor, bilinear, bicubic Mitchell, bicubic Catmull ROM, and XBR. Now depending on which one of these you use is what it's gonna look like. Personally, I use bicubic Mitchell because it is the cleanest. As for the other ones, they do get a little bit hazy depending on the option you want. Personally, I would not use Nearest Neighbor. That one obviously looks really terrible. Bicubic Bi Mitchell is a very good UI scaling setting to use. Next is anisotropic filtering. Now this one is actually kind of not needed for old school RuneScape, I'll be honest with you. This filtering can increase and sharpen the quality of textures on surfaces that appear to be far away or at a kind of weird angle. Now as far as old school RuneScape, goes. I don't really think this one is necessary. My filtering is set to zero and even turning it up to 16, I really can't notice that much of a difference. But again, with an older GPU or onboard graphics, it will try to do something with this. So if you do turn this up and you don't have the GPU power, it can make your frame rate suffer. So be careful with the filtering here. The next option is the color blindness. And this is actually really, really cool that they did include this because the regular old school RuneScape does not have color blind mode. So you have the Proton, nope, Proton, nope, I don't even know how to say these. Deuteranope and Tritonope. I know what they are, but uh, I'm terrible at pronouncing them. But regardless, they are three different color blind modes for color blind people that are affected differently. So if you are color blind, this could really help you out as the normal old school client doesn't have this mode. Next is gonna be the flashing effects. And with the flashing effects, this is actually pretty cool. They did put some lightning around old school RuneScape with this HD client. You can use it if you're at Barrows, it gives a little bit more of a spooky effect and you'll see it on the here screen here now. Every now and then you get a little flash and it's lightning, it's pretty cool. Next up is the color balancing options. So you have saturation, contrast and brightness for your color balancing. That's actually really nice. Now for me, Saturation, I have it on higher, contrast is higher, and my brightness is set at 20. Now you can actually change the option to highest, which would be really blown out to me. The colors just look a little too vivid for me when the saturation and contrast are set to the highest, but I think they are perfect for old school RuneScape when they are set to higher. As for the brightness, you can also blow out the image with this if you change it to something like 50 or higher, but again, if it does suit your needs, if you have a visual imparity and you need to see stuff that is brighter, then you can change this level based on what your needs are. Something that the regular old school client does not have, so that is very good for certain people. I have my brightness set to 20 and it's perfect for me. As for the level of detail, you can also choose this from full, high, medium, and low, and this will change the level of detail that this 117 plugin is putting in for you. 
But once again, and I'm gonna keep reminding you guys of this throughout this video, it can affect your frame rate if you're using an older graphics card or onboard graphics of a computer that doesn't have a dedicated GPU. So that is gonna be it for our general settings for the 117 HD client. Next, we're gonna get into our lighting effects. And this was a really nice touch for this client. It makes the game look, well, it makes it look like it's not from 2007 or even earlier, really. I mean, 2003 was when RuneScape 2 started, which is basically what this game is based on. But the lighting effects that were added into this plugin are very nice, especially if you're just seeing me standing here in Edgeville you can see the fires burning and the torches around the bank and they're giving off a nice glow. It's a really, really nice touch to this plugin. As for the lighting, this is your dynamic lights, the maximum number of dynamic lights that are visible at one time and reducing this can improve your performance. So you can change it from few, some to many, obviously based on my graphics card, I keep it on many at all times because it can handle that. So once again, graphics card, check it out, see what works for you. Projectile lights, and those are for different projectiles around the game. NPCs do shoot projectiles as well as some spells that you can shoot through the spell books and that will give them a little glow. NPC lights, these are gonna be the same thing, such as the thermonuclear smoke devil pet. It has a little bit of a glow and it has a really nice glow on the ground under that pet. It's really cool to look at. Atmospheric lighting. This one is pretty cool because it changes the color and brightness of full scene lighting in certain areas. So you'll have to go around the game and you'll notice it every now and then when you're in certain areas. Shadows is something I really think that they outdid themselves on this. I never would have thought I'd see shadows in old school RuneScape, but here we are and they look great. Shadow quality can be adjusted, low, medium, high, and ultra. Once again, I have it set to ultra. You'll have to see what works best for you. That doesn't kill your frame rate. As for the shadow distance, you can do this depending on what you're looking for. I have mine on the lowest, which is 20, and that is fine. The shadow distance will be the maximum draw distance of shadow maps. Shorter distances result in sharper, higher quality shadows, and that is right from the rune light tip. As for the expand shadow draw, that does reduce the flickering of shadows disappearing at the screen edge. So you'll want to turn that on. Personally, I think it does help. Moving into our environment settings, these are also really cool. Just like the lighting effects, they've really did a good job on the environment settings. Now setting this one up is also going to make your GPU suffer or it could just make your gaming experience a lot better if you have a good graphics card. The first one is the fog depth mode and this is three different modes and they change based on the area. So I have mine set to dynamic and this will change the fog depth based on where you are. So in Edgeville, it's not really that intense, but if I'm out in the wilderness, then the fog does become a little bit more intense and you know pretty cool to look at. Your options here are none, dynamic, and static. As for the static fog depth, this will only actually work if you have the mode set to static. Ground fog, you can turn ground fog on and this will give you a height-based fog effect that covers the ground in certain areas. Certain areas like this are gonna be your more spooky, spooky areas in old school RuneScape, which would be like Mortania or Mire Ditch, something along those lines. Next up is going to be the default sky color, and this is really just a personal preference. You can do blue, you can also change it to the old school sky, which is just black, and you can change it to the 2008 HD mode, which is tan. So that is just a personal preference. It's not really gonna affect the performance of your graphics processor, no matter which one you pick. Object textures. This will texture certain objects around the world of RuneScape. Very self-explanatory. Turn it on or off based on your needs. Ground textures is gonna be the same thing. Ground textures will make the ground look a whole lot better. If you do turn this off in the 117 client, it pretty much just looks like normal old school RuneScape with slightly better looking characters and buildings. Ground blending is also very nice to have on because it will blend the squares in the ground rather than have them look kind of straight and have hard corners like old school RuneScape is accustomed to. Very nice job with the ground blending. Water effects, you have two options here, all or simple. The water looks great. The water in old school RuneScape with the 117 client with the 117 plugin looks fantastic. Once again, I have it on. You might have to turn it off depending on what you're doing. And the HD Czar reskin, it recolors the Czar city 
uh, for more alt rec to give it an appearance similar to that of its 2008 HD variant. So very self-explanatory. If you want to see it look like it did in the 2008 HD version, you can turn that on. As for the workarounds, there is only one workaround currently available, and this is to fix shading on the Mac OS with an Intel based processor. So that is only for our Mac users. If you're using Windows, you don't have to worry about that. So that is going to do it, everybody, for this tutorial on the 117 HD plugin for the RuneLite client. My personal opinion about this client, they blew this out of the water. It is a great addition to old school RuneScape, and I really think it has given the game a entirely, entirely new revamp that it really needed so much. Are the graphics top notch? Absolutely not. It's old school RuneScape. You can only make it so much better, but they did an incredible job spicing up this 20 plus year old game. So if you've been watching this video and you're finding yourself liking how my current old school RuneScape is looking, if you check the description below, there is a link to a Google Doc which will have all of the settings and my personal settings and values for them. Once again, I'm going to say it again. Remember, if your GPU is older or if you don't have a dedicated GPU, you may have trouble running some of these settings. But if you have something like a minimum, I would say, of an NVIDIA 1060 or better, you will probably have no issues with using this client just how I have it set up. So guys, if you like the video, please remember to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't done so yet, tap that subscribe button on your way out. I would like to know what you guys think of the 117 HD plugin. Let me know in the comments below. Maybe we can discuss some things or if you have any questions based on the settings, please let me know. I will be happy to try to answer as many as I can. Thank you all for watching. I will see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody.